Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday Gathering Experience. Um, um, I know that this is not usually a normal thing that we do having a virtual uh, service on Sundays, um, but we we are still going to press through like we normally do. So give you a couple minutes to to share, to like, to subscribe, do whatever it is you have to do, and uh, we'll get right into the word. Um, I'm thankful to have the opportunity just to, to share with you guys. Um, and we honor the pastor and all of the ministers in their absence. Uh, we know that um, they're currently out of town um, getting getting some, some good word, uh, learning some things. But like I said, we're, we're going to, we're going to dive in. We're going to, we have something here for you guys today and, and um, we'll, we'll get right into it. Uh, but before we do all of that, um, I do want to just say a quick prayer uh, before we get into it all. So uh, Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for allowing us to be here. Uh, we thank you, Father, for giving us the time to, to gather in your presence. And we, we thank you for opening ourselves up to, to receiving your word. Lord, I pray that this word, it, it touches the people and, and that it does what it's, it's supposed to do. And I thank you, Father. Pray your will be done in your holy and heavenly name. Amen. So today um, I want to talk about something that I think is definitely necessary. This is one of those uh, where we get into, I guess for lack of better words, we could say like an identity crisis. Um, we're, we're struggling with a few things here and there, right? With regard to what we're here for, what we're supposed to be doing or how to see where we're going. And in those three elements, the identity, the, the purpose, and the discernment, um, we could we could call this the the fight of mankind. And what I want to do is I want to talk about each of these different elements, talking about um, who we are, because we do go through a process of um, kind of creating conflict within ourselves without realizing it. Um, our purpose. Um, cause I know a lot of us, we, we are told that we're, we're given a certain purpose and it's not the entirety of what it is God's asking for us. Or for that matter, we try to blend what we see with what the rest of the world says we should do and what, uh, what the word says that we should do. And we try to find some healthy medium, which that's not the word of God. And then finally, us being able to have the discernment to recognize what God says um, we should be looking out for, um, vice what we actually look out for. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break each of these down uh, and give us definitions for each of them. And then we're going to we're going to just expound on each each element. And the first element that I want to talk about is that of identity. So um, the definition of identity is the, the state of being exactly alike. Um, identity is also the set of qualities that make a person different from other people. And this is perfect in terms of um, our identity because as a body we have, we all have one goal in mind and that is to cultivate heaven on earth. And in that each of us has our own unique set of abilities or skills, or we have our own callings that we all have to um, follow or adhere to in order for us to complete God's mission. And we all are dependent on each other in order to do that. Now, as we get into this element of identity, First thing that we should consider is God's image and likeness or his character. And one of the things that I've, I've recognized or that we kind of go about in, in our day and age 
is that we have a mixed understanding of who we are. Now, I know a lot of us talk about in, in Genesis how we're created in God's image and likeness, and we get excited about that. And then we talk about being made in, in Genesis chapter two out of the, the dust of the ground and being made for the, the women folk out of the, the rib of the man. And we we all believe that. And this is true. But then we go further into talking about God's word and then we reject the very creation that God made. Not only that, but we also know that in Genesis one, when he creates us in his image and likeness, uh, he also gives us his character, his characteristics. There's um, a lot of what he gives us to have rule, you know, um, to have the dominion. And in verse in Genesis one and verse 28, he tells us that he wants us to have the rule, the 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 dominion over everything. And dominion is is more than just the the, the dominating uh, or the control as as we're accustomed to, but it's also mastery. So that's that's knowledge. And in order for us to have that knowledge or to know how to successfully control or to rule over this place, we should know what's in it. That being said, um, we tend to reject that idea. And, and I know that sounds, you know, over the top in some cases, but we do because we believe that we don't have the, the, the capabilities or we don't have the, the ability or the power because of what happened with Adam and Eve. But the reality is God gave us exactly what it was that we needed um, in order for us to have that, that rule or that dominion. So from a character perspective, we have to we have to go back and, and and look at who we are in terms of what God says and and not continue to tell ourselves that we don't have what God gave us. From that same vein, we also talk about our natural and our spiritual bodies. And again, you reference the same the same verses in Genesis chapter one and Genesis chapter two, where we see the the. The, the physical body and the, the spiritual body. And we agree that that is what God gave us. But in that same, in that same token, we, we start to push away from the physical body and we tell ourselves that our physical bodies are, are bad. And in that we create um, a lot of discord within ourselves. You go in and you look at Matthew 12 and, and 25 and it, and it tells us that, a house divided against itself can't stand. And that's more than just uh, the body of Christ as a whole. That's also speaking to the individual. And if we find ourselves saying that we can't, uh, we, we're, we're telling ourselves that our, our physical bodies don't have any, any use or it, it's no good, then we're hurting ourselves. And we're basically telling ourselves that we don't have uh, any any reason for being here that also opens the door for us to say that what God created in which God says that everything he created was good. We're telling God that it's not. And that's the last thing that we want to do. But as a body and as a, as the religion kind of pushes, we continue on with that separation and, and the division. And we do it from a place of zeal because it sounds nice. And I understand we do want to build our spiritual our spiritual man, we want to build our spiritual bodies, but God also teaches us unity and he wants everything unified and the way that he created everything, everything is to be unified, working together for obviously God's purpose. Speaking of the separation, we get into the characteristics of man and woman and we separate and divide these characteristics in the same in the same regard. And we try to, to box in what a man should be or what a woman should be. And from that same that that same place, we were giving a lot of what God says is in both of us to one side, which creates also creates an imbalance. We say that, you know, men should be leading and they should be logical and and women should be submissive or nurturing and and the reality is that a, a woman can lead um I, I do hope to one day talk about that um because god giving eve her purpose to be a help meet 
to help is to aid and to aid is to guide and in guidance, that's actually leadership. Um, we talk about men not being nurturers, but the definition of nurture is to train and men have the ability to train. We see it all the time. I mean, look at the body of Christ. Men are leading people to Christ, or at least that's what we say that the the purpose of men in leadership in, in the in the body of Christ is supposed to do. But we we continue to separate those things and, and create a lot of, of uh, problems as a result of that. And that's, again, not what God has for us. From that, from from this, we can go into the, the world's view of what we identify. And again, as a result of what happened with Adam and Eve, the, the disconnect, being removed from the garden and, and being removed from that source, we find ourselves with another dilemma of identity. And from that place, we decide to define ourselves, kind of going into what was talked about in the earlier, in the earlier point. Um, in doing that, we we say that men should, you know, never be vulnerable, that that's never a good thing. And we, you know, we continue to put restrictions on what a man can and can't do. Well, a man can't do this or a man shouldn't be able to do that. Or why are, why are men doing this? And we see what that looks like, especially in today's day and age where we have social media just floating around and everybody has an opinion and, and everybody's leaning towards, oh, yeah, this is the this is the right thing or that's the the right thing. And yeah, that's what a man should be. And, and that's not what God says. And the same thing with women, right? We just talked about how we, we say that women can't lead and we put restrictions on what a woman can do. And, oh no, a woman has to be this, or a woman has to be that. And when we do that, we, again, we create further identity crises with men and women, making it difficult for us to recognize who we are, which goes against God's God's will or God's word. Speaking of God's perception of us versus our own perception, God sees everything and he sees everything that's connected to him as united, right? If we, if you want to go and, and reference um, what I mean by that, you can look at John chapter one, you read the first five verses and you can see that there, or you can also read Genesis chapter one and see how everything God created it, it's all unified, even the, the two sides being uh, light and dark, for example, they might be opposite, but they all they're all serving a purpose together. God also purposes everything that he has together to be dependent upon each other, as well as him in order to fulfill his purpose. In in other words, if um one thing doesn't do what it's supposed to do, then that affects everybody else being able to do whatever it is that they're called to do. Um, I'll lead into this with this, the story. So um, I had left the church back in 2019. Um, and one of the reasons I had left was I, I just didn't want to deal with the politics. And I remember asking God, to show me who he was. And I wanted him to show me who he was outside of the, the, the walls of the church or outside of the, the parameters of the church, um, because I still believe in him and I still wanted to, to, to follow what he had, but I just didn't want to, to, to subscribe myself to the, the ideology of religion. And so I'm sitting in my room one day and I just so happened to be looking out the window and he began to talk to me and he tells me to look at the tree and I'm looking at the tree and he, he asked me what I, what do I notice about the tree and I talk about the branches and, and the, and I and talk about the leaves and um, we get into the, the details behind that. And, and he's telling me, yeah, the, the, think of that, like your, your, uh, your blood vessels, like think, look at how those two link up together. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. And then we get further into elements like the, the nourishment um, because the, the trees have the roots. The roots go deep into the ground and they're looking, they're seeking out water. It's seeking out other types of nutrients for it to grow and to thrive as well as to produce its fruit. And 
I'm like, yeah, that 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 makes a lot of sense. And he's showing me, okay, yeah, what else do you know about the tree? I said, well, it gives it gives out oxygen. Yeah, okay. And what else? They say, well, it also trees, some trees also produce fruit for us to, to eat. It's like, right. So what about you? What do you give the tree? I started to think about it. Well, I give the tree the carbon dioxide. So it turns that carbon dioxide into oxygen. He's like, yeah, that's right. Well, what else? Think about when you pass away. It's like, oh, yeah. you In your word, it says that from the ground we came and from the ground we'll go back. So, yeah your nutrients, the, the thing that's in you, you're also giving back to the, to the tree and the tree takes what it gets from you. It produces fruit to help someone else. So you're just as dependent on the tree as the tree is dependent on you. And the more we start going through that process, the more I'm like, Oh, there's a lot of connection like that. And I know a lot of people might find this funny, but this really hit home for me. And um, a little bit later, I was watching, uh, I was watching the the Lion King. And if you're familiar with, with um, the Lion King, then you know uh, where I'm, you might know where I'm about to go. And Simba and Mufasa are walking in the Pride Lands and, and Mufasa is telling Simba about how everything is connected in the great circle of life and how the the lions, when they pass away, they become the, the the grass for the antelopes to eat. And we, you know, the, the lions eat the antelopes and all these things are dependent upon one another in order for the, the whole uh, universe that they know of to thrive and survive. And God is God was showing me that in that same vein. And I'm like, wow, that's that really does hit home. And God lets it be known that that's exactly what he wants everything to be connected to serve a purpose and everything else has to fall into its its proper place and do what its purpose to do because if it doesn't something else doesn't get to to experience its its totality which hurts us all and anything that doesn't come into alignment can't fo- uh, function properly if at all but God also knows how to deal with that, to allow for that thing to either function as it's supposed to or to just completely cut it off. Now, from our perception of things, we try to identify what's spiritual and or what's good and or what's bad um, and or what's natural. And from us trying to define that from our place, our limited uh, element of knowledge, we we come to find out that that's not what God intended for. That's not God's word. We also try to identify, or we also try to identify what we want with purpose in terms of creation, and that's also not God's word because we're trying to base it on our own interpretation of God's word as opposed to God's word being God's word. And you can reference Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six for that, right? To trust the Lord our God with with our heart and lean not into our own understanding. In all our ways, we should acknowledge him and he'll direct our path. But that's letting it be known that he knows way more than what we do. Another word, another verse you can go and look at is, is um, in first Corinthians where it, uh, I think it's eight and nine, where it talks about we um, see and know and, and understand in part and we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, from But from that place, essentially, this is all about identity. And this is what God is revealing to us. You know, we find ourselves getting into a place of saying that this is um, this is what we believe or this is what we want to subscribe to. But God's word says otherwise. And we have to understand that we need both both sides. Now, I do understand that a lot of us do talk about the flesh and the flesh being what it is. But the flesh is not our physical bodies. The flesh is actually our minds, our our hearts, if you will, our mindsets. And what happened with result of Adam and Eve falling as as a result of listening to the enemy um, 
they found themselves looking at um, they, they, they found themselves looking at walking outside of God's will without realizing it. And that disconnect is essentially what came as a result. It's not so, and again, um, it's not so much that the physical body is bad. It's the, it's the mindset, the corruption of the mind. That is what we call the flesh. We can also get into uh, the realm of purpose. We get into purpose. We talk about what purpose is and, and purpose is something that is set up as an object or an end to be attained. Um, purpose is also a subject under discussion or an action in, in course of execution. And again, this is just like what God has, uh, has for us, right? He tells us what it is that he's wanting for us to do. He gives us that again in Genesis chapter one, where he tells us that he wants us to have rule over everything, but it's not just having the rule. It's us being able to, to bear the fruit and bearing fruit is, is bigger than just the 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 multiplying right the men and the woman coming together and bearing a seed that's that's knowledge that's sharing knowledge that's sharing wisdom um, that's sharing love that's cultivating essentially heaven on earth um and god created speaking of god created the physical heavens and the the earth to allow us to experience that and in in him doing that, it, it creates a very humbling and powerful way for us to see creation. It allows us to see how everything again is connected to um, each other to fulfill God's purpose. Now, God allows for um, the spirit and, and the, the physical to flow in unity to create the life. So if we, we want to get into how that dynamic works, I mean, obviously we, we know about when a man and a woman come together and they worship the Lord and, you know, they have, they have life, but you can also look at um, when God takes his, his, his concept of light in Genesis one and three. And from that comes into the, the, the physical realm, what light is and God giving us that power, right? for us to be able to take those things and to bring them into life. That is the beauty of, of God allowing us to see his will and purpose in action. It's one of those reasons why we have to be mindful of what we say, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, our plight and our understanding in regard to this, because of the fall of Adam and Eve, um, we decide that we want to create our own destiny. And again, it's, it's, a lot of it is good intention or well intentioned, but we kind of brush off what God says. Again, Genesis 1 and 28 lets it be known that this is what we're supposed to do. But we found we find a way to basically make it something a little different. You know, we we work, we live life, we exist, we give God praise and worship. And then we tell everybody that being on the earth is just a temporary thing until we get to heaven. And then we go to heaven and we praise and worship for eternity. But that goes back again to Genesis three, five and six, because we've created that to be our thing. And that's not God's thing. God wanted us to, to, to see and experience in real time heaven. So not only does he want us to experience that in real time, he also wants us to be in, um, he, he wants us to experience the, the elements of unity. He wants us to experience the, the elements of, of togetherness and to see the, the power and the, the authority of not just um, God in, in, in the spiritual sense, but God in the natural sense. Uh, we get to see the, all of the signs and the wonders and the miracles that God has created through his creation. You think about what light does, light illuminates, right? We, we, we often overlook it or we, we don't think about how powerful that really is. Um, we could take it and, and make it a really simple example. If I walk into a dark room, I don't know where anything is. And if you go and you look at the definition of darkness in the Hebrew, that's that's actually what that means. It, it, it's 
representative of of not knowing or being in a place of of confusion and then you turn on a light you, you you turn a light switch on something is illuminated you come to the knowledge of what's there you know where things are and you know how to navigate and maneuver and that's a very powerful thing but like i said sometimes we overlook that and we 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 brush it off or we don't think that that is is as a big a deal or as important or as as uh, powerful as god really made it out to be which is um unfortunate from that same place we we go into men's and women's responsibilities and we just like we do when we label our character we do the same thing when we we label our our responsibilities what a man should do and what a woman should do um we say men lead and they protect and they work and they provide and they minister and they do all of these things. And, and women can, they, they make the home and they nurture and they submit and, and they're helping and, and they're, they're doing these things. And while they have their place, again, we're separating based on what we've subscribed to. And that's not to say that some things don't have, um, they don't have their place. But God also lets it be known that we have the, the capabilities of doing both. And there's there's deeper um, revelation in, in that with regard to um, looking at how God created Adam and Eve. When we look at how God made Adam, he made Adam out of the dust of the ground. And that's a representation of, of the connection to the earth. And there's an earthly responsibility or a natural responsibility for um, the physical body. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. And then being made, uh, Eve being made out of the spirit or out of the, the spirit of the man being made in spirit. There's a representation or a responsibility to the spirit. And, and we'll talk about that, like I said, a little bit later, but there's, there's responsibility for both to carry out in terms of what God is saying in, um, in, in the aspect of, us being able to do both sides, to, to work, to provide, to minister, to nurture, to, to submit to, to, to help out and to aid and to understand. Um, getting into that, we, we should look at um, just how the representation of the man and the woman again, are deeper than just the man and the woman and how that connects to um, how that connects to the 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 natural and the spiritual and, and how they represent God's will and purpose and as an individual person. Um, I know a lot of us are familiar with Ephesians chapter five and you read verses uh, 21 through 33 where it talks about how the man should, love Christ as or love the wife as Christ loved the church and the woman should submit herself as unto Christ and and um what the, that represents in a natural sense or in the, the the one direct sense that God also you know oftentimes uses but that also again is representative of how the natural man is or, or how the physical the physical body is a representation of that so and what I mean by that is the the physical the physical body is a covering. God is allowing for um, that physical body to be what um, an outer or a protector of the spiritual man. And I know that that might sound a little over the top, and, and I, I I hope that that's not too much. Um, and the spiritual being has to submit to that, and that's again what God is asking us to 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 uh, again sub subscribe to to see the two of them working together because we can't have one without the other. Um, when we get into that, we get into the, 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 the view of the flesh or the, the, the world uh, aspect of what purpose is. And we find ourselves living in, in the unique blend of the worldview of manhood and womanhood and our interpretation of God's view from that same place. And you think about, what we do in today's day and age, right? We want the man to work and he should work uh, and provide and the woman takes care of the home. And like I said, again, that has its place. I get that, but you get further into it 
you start to see a lot of the women becoming frustrated and upset a lot of times because they're holding on to a lot of men's responsibilities when the man is going out to work and providing, right? She's taking care of the household. She's being a protector. She's nurturing along with everything else that we say that is a man's responsibility. And that creates a lot of frustration, that creates a lot of, of pain and, and um, things along that line. And that's, again, not what God was intending for. And that's, and that's not what it is God is, is asking of us. But we also try to find um, relevance in, in doing that by connecting our disconnected ideology of the word um, to what God is actually saying. Uh, a great example of this can be found in um, 1 Corinthians 13, 11. And um, I'll pull that up real quick. In 1 Corinthians 13, 11, um, in the King James, um, it, it tells us that when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away um, childish things. And a lot of us think that that's a representation of, you know, growing up and we have to be adults and we have to take care of our responsibilities, um, which as a standalone verse, it would make a lot of sense. But in the context of what it is God is asking or um, in in this case, Paul is writing. It has it it has more to do with the stepping into what God is asking for, and understanding that when we start off, it's okay to to take on what little things that we we can grasp a hold of to to see or to to believe on what God has. But the further we go into what God is asking uh, of us, we we can't stay in those those small little things that we had once learned, right? Think of it like being in elementary school. You go from kindergarten to first grade. You don't go from kindergarten to the ninth grade. You, you're, you're missing out on oh so much, or you can't just stay in the kindergarten for forever because you're not developing at that point either. Another verse that we can look at where we kind of take those things out of context can be found in, in Proverbs um, chapter 13 in verse 24. And I know a lot of us, we love this verse, right? He that spareth the rod hateth the son, but he that loveth him chast chasteneth him um, the times. And I know in, in that time you had the men, um, the shepherds, and, and the, the, in some cases, maybe older men who had the rods and they would use them in forms of discipline. But a lot of us, we've taken that and we've made that a literal. So, no, you you know, you, you need to whoop them kids. And we get all excited about it. Whoop them kids, whoop them kids. But it's not necessarily about the whooping, right? More so as it is about the discipline. And we, we um, in some cases, we get, you know, we get excited about um, that element of discipline. And we say that that's what God wants. And he does. He wants us to discipline. He wants us to cultivate and teach. But he also doesn't want us to do so out of anger and frustration. Right. Be angry, but sin not. God um, recognizing that, because sometimes I look at myself as an example. I have a heavy I'm a big guy. I'm a, I have a heavy hand. Me trying to strike a kid or to teach someone from that place would be a little over the top. But if we know how to chasten and, and God shows us how to chasten, right? He doesn't just go straight for the the whooping every time. He teaches us, he talks to us, he 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 works with us. Right. And, and um those are things that he wants us to 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 see and understand. That it's not just going and whooping the kids for no reason. No, just give them an opportunity to to step into um, or to learn, have a have a talk with them and, and reason with them. Um, the last verse that we can look at that that has that same element is um, 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. And it says, um, for even when we were with you, this we commanded of you, that if you, you would not work, neither should you eat. And I know a lot of us, we get into the idea that, you know, if you don't work, you don't eat. And that does have its place. But this verse as 
as Paul was writing was more so to the people that were actually working in the, in the church. And those men in, were reaping all of the benefits, but they weren't holding their weight. And that's what, you know, that's what um, Paul was actually addressing. I think all of us do understand that we work serves a purpose, but God also wants us to know that he wants his purpose fulfilled more so than anything else. We can look at uh, Matthew six, where he talks about the, the, the raven, consider the raven and, and how all of its needs are taken care of. And rightfully so, because it is doing what it is its purpose to do. Um, we also, from that same place, we find our, our, ourselves um, putting expectations of convenience in our lives. So we, we find ways to make that healthy balance between what we want and what God says um, in terms of his word and finding a way to bend and and maneuver that to fit what he says that he wants um, or what we want. I'm sorry. Um, going into the next element, we have the relationships and the religious traditions. Um, now, God values connection and he, he values unity. And in this, we're all dependent upon each other to achieve our goals and our purpose. Um, and this is a big reason why independence and individuality can become chaotic and it can become misleading. Um, now our beliefs, whether religious, social, or otherwise, they teach us, uh, we can find that they teach a lot of separation and division. Now, God does want us to separate. Um, he wants us to separate ourselves from sin, but he wants us all to be connected in purpose. The separation that we typically teach is more so based on what we see in the surface. Um, and God doesn't want us to separate that way that that's not god's will but that separation also creates a lot of confusion and conflict within the inner body because we're separating and judging from the surface and god is judging and and separating from the internal the, the inside if you will but our misalignment in in god's will and purpose also encourages what we would consider individuality and again that leads to a lot of isolation and confusion one of the ways that we can see that in, in today's day and age is, uh, again, going back to social media, we see how everyone gets into um, the the idea that, um, you know, if, if I have my feelings or my reservations about something, I can go on social media. And as long as I have a few people that can um, that can justify or that that'll validate my feeling, then I'm good. And when we do that, especially when we get into the, the, the realm or the dynamic of how um, that puts us in a place where we believe that we're, we're standing on the, the, the right principles, we eventually end up finding ourselves alone. And again, that that's where the enemy wants us, realistically, more so than where God wants us. Um. And then you get into the realm of connection versus separation, which, again, we've we've talked about quite a bit. Now, a lot of what God teaches or what he wants us to understand can be found in the very foundation of his creation. Now, we when we do have the ability to see that with the discernment, which we'll talk about here in a second, um, we'll be able to see. Um, why it's necessary for us to be connected to each other as well as being connected to him. Now we can look to um, Mark chapter uh, 11 and Matthew chapter 21 in the Synoptic Gospels that talks about um, the fig tree. And if you're familiar with the story of the fig tree, then you know that Jesus curses the fig tree in, in, those, um, in those stories because he was hungry and he, he saw the fig tree and the fig tree looked like it was ready to um, it, it was ready to produce fruit or it was supposed to produce fruit, but there was no fruit. And that that's a great example going back to what we were talking about earlier, where we see how um, you operating in your capacity, but not doing what you're, you're, you're operating in your full capacity, if you will. Um, there's something that has to be done. Right. And that's where God tells us, Hey, this is, this is not it. 
you you have to either you you have to be separate from me because you're not doing what your your purpose to do. Um, because the separation leads to discord, um, we also can see how that indecision, um, the partial understanding, we can see how we the traditions we created and, and the perceptions and other things find us again trying to to be in the best of both worlds, and that find you know finding out how we can get into a, a place of um, being able to eat from both sides, right? The, the world has their thing that they say that they want. We have our thing or we have our thing that we say that we are, we're believing God for. And James one and eight tells us that, you know, any double minded man is unstable in all his ways. And in, in us being unstable in that regard, we open the door for us to, really not operate again in our, our full potential and us not recognizing that, which leads right into the next element, which is discernment um, calls for us to, to be able to get into a place of, of perceiving and discerning and recognizing what it is that God is asking for. Now discernment is the quality of, of being able to grasp and to comprehend what is obscure or the act of perceiving, uh, perceiving or discerning something. And the way that God sees versus the way that we see, again, God sees and knows everything. Um, he sees all the hidden things in everything. He knows um, what contributes to our lives and, and how we can make it right for ourselves and how we can make it right for our bloodlines. Um, God knows how to put the right things in place to, to, to bring about the character that is within us or the, the elements that are within us to rise to the occasion to fulfill um, our purpose, which is um, helping God's will be done. Um, but unlike God, we see and understand in part, right? That again, that's third, uh, first Corinthians chapter 13. Now we try to make a full picture from this, um, uh, from the little bit that we do get and the downsides of doing that is we can create a lot of um, imbalance or we can create a, a lot of, of um, our own destiny in, in that regard to um, putting together um, our own picture of what it is that, that God is saying or God is revealing to us. Now, God knows how to take that and, and use that to his advantage because he he designs for our perception to be in part and he does this again for us to become dependent on each other and to him and to him as as, as well um and when we we think about that if i if i receive a word or if i receive a prophecy or if i receive um something from from god or from uh someone who is speaking on behalf of god then that's for me to go into to maybe take to someone else or to try um, God at, at his word and, and getting maybe deeper insight because maybe I'm, I can, I can see what it is that's being said, but I, I might not be able to interpret it or I might not be able to understand what it is that God is asking, but someone else might have a, a, a spirit to discern or to interpret. So I use that. Um, and I'm able to, to get a better understanding of what I should or shouldn't do. And again, that's God's purpose and design in, in action with us being able to, to utilize that discernment. Cause if obviously if, if God allowed us to have his, uh, his ability to see everything, there'd be no need for him. And there wouldn't be a need for us to, to depend on each other. We would all be basically independent. Um, now our sight naturally and spiritually, um, is important, but one of the things that has hurt us in, in times past and even in today's day is we do have a, a sense of imbalance in that regard because we've become accustomed to, um, overcompensating in, in the spiritual sense, because we've, we live a life where we more so appeal to our, our, our physical sight, our natural sight. We see what we see and that's what we, we, we take with us. 
Um, but we do try to overcompensate that by trying to make everything as spiritual as possible, which is, um, again, it, it's not where God is trying to take us. God wants us to be able to utilize um, the, the spiritual and the natural in, in unison so that we can we can flow appropriately. We can see what's being done on the outside, but we can also understand what's going on on the inside. You take the woman, um, you take the woman at the well, for example, when Jesus goes and speaks to the woman at the well, um, he knows what she's dealing with and where she is. And, and he knows that she's, you know, she's hurting in some cases. Now she's trying, she might be trying to play it off as if she's not or whatever the case may be. But as, as they further their conversation, um, she starts to to reveal or she starts to realize that he's he knows exactly where she is. And after the conversation ends, she goes on and she tells everybody that he's here. The Messiah is here and he's real. And that's the same thing that God is looking for us to see. You, you think about a, a young boy who um, finds himself in the midst of um, acting out and he he's acting out and he might be looking for love. He might be looking for someone to connect to him or to, to show him that someone actually cares about him. But the way that he goes about showing it might be a, a detriment. It might be a bad thing. He might say some things or he might do some things that are, you know, we, we might say are, are, are bad. But if, 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 um, if we go and we talk to that person, we, we talk to that young man and we, we get to, to see the, the heart, the character, the, the inner being of, of, the, of who he is and realize that his outer actions the, or the projections that he has is more so a reflection of him being hurt. Now we know how to address him and we're, we're able to, to approach him and, and, and love on him as God intended for him to be loved on. And that's, again, like I said, that's what, where God wants us to go with that. Um, then we get into the idea or the, the dynamic of the, the flesh and the, the Christian view of reality. If you want to go with that, um, the world sees the reality in a, a regard to appealing to the senses. And we take logic and reason and we try to separate it from the reality of the spiritual experience, right? If we, we say that some person was healed from something that was just luck or that was just, a, you know, it was a um, one in a billion chance. It's, it's not realistic and it doesn't happen often. Um, and God's telling us, or he's showing us that that's not, that is not the case at all. God wants us to see that um, his, his being is also real, um, realized in the in the natural, just as much as he wants us to to see and recognize that the spiritual element is real. But um, our spiritual discernment should should allow us to understand the meaning behind the spiritual experience and the natural experience. In other words going back to the, the the situation with the young man or the woman at the well, we should be able to see spiritually just as much as, as we should be able to see naturally what's really going on. Um, in order for us to do that, we have to look at the, the ambiguity of, of God's word. Now, I know a lot of us, um, we know that God's word has more than one meaning. We see the the meaning as what's being written out in the in the natural sense, but we also can see that there's deeper meaning. And that's why we have to study and, and dig deeper into God's word. But the connection to Christ allows us to see how we can live in that harmony, how we can how we can live in in the 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 realm of seeing the the deeper things and and how those things have um how they they're they're representative of the time that we might be in 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 terms of growth. Um, a great example for me in this regard was 
um, looking at the Ten Commandments, I remember reading um, Commandment number five, and I know a lot of parents love that one. Um, Honor your mother, your father, and your mother for it'll add days into your life. Um, it's the first. It, we we oftentimes say that that's the first um, commandment with promise. Yeah, uh, when I read it, of course, obviously, I saw that yes, there is the 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 element of um, there is the element of obviously obeying your mother and your father. But then I started looking deeper into it, and then there's you know another thing to recognize, which is um, the mother and the father being uh, a representation of the source, uh, which is God Himself. And then the earth, which is representative of what we're supposed to take care of and God showing us in, in that regard to take care of the, the gift that God gave us, right? The God gifted us this, us this place to have rule over and for us to have the, the rule over this place and to, to be able to, to pass it on to the next generation and the generation after that, we have to honor it. We have to respect it. We have to care for it. We have to love it. We have to, you know, we have to, to nourish it and, and know how to tend to it. Right. And again, which is something that, um, God gifted Adam when he, um, put him in the garden to tend to it. Um, but that was something beautiful to see and to, to recognize, uh, because it allowed for us to, to see that, what God is, is, is teaching us is deeper than just what we oftentimes will say is that surface level, if you will. Um, in all, in all of this, and I'll continue to say this, um, time and time again, the, the thing that we're looking for, or God is looking for is a sense of balance to know who we are, to accept who we are. From from the identity aspect, God wants us to to see that the character that we have and the the physical being that we 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 walk in every day, um, the the those two things need to be one and the same. They need to work together. They need to to operate in unity. We can't operate in in discord with one another. Um, as a people, we can't operate in in separation and rejection or pushing people away and, and thinking that that is the will of God, because that is not what God is asking us to do. He's not asking us to separate ourselves from other people. He is asking us to connect to other people. He's asking us to, to unify. Um, in terms of purpose, we, we have to realize that God's purpose is always for us to, to, to spread our, our love, our knowledge, our insight, our, our wisdom, to other people so that they can build. And as we build the community that, that God is, is wanting, we're allowing ourselves to, to, to fulfill God's will. And I know I didn't say this earlier and I, it, it slipped my mind, but um, when it comes to identifying or understanding the, the, the physical earth, right? We, sometimes we call the earth um, the, the devil's kingdom. And again, that is not something that God is saying, or that is not something that God had had commanded, or that is what God willed. But we give that identity to the earth, and somehow we manage to to pass that along, and we make that the the, the thing. But that is not that is not God at all. That is not God's will. That is not God's purpose. That is what we have given to to, to carry out what we think is what God is saying or what we, we think is, um, basically what religion says. We also have to put ourselves in position to, um, dig deep into the discernment to recognize and to, to trust the things that God is, is revealing to us and not for the purpose of exposure in, in the sense of what we see in today's day and age, like what we see on social media, where we try to call out the bad things and, and say that they're, they're terrible, they're evil, and we should leave them alone or whatever, whatever you want to say in that regard. But we should be, we should be teaching, we should be cultivating, we should be helping, we should be, um, we should be 
correcting and, and training, not um, not ridiculing or shaming in, in that regard. Um, because again, that is that is God's will and purpose. He wants us to be to to be in in alignment with Him, and the only way that we can do that is to recognize that to to um, to know who we are and to understand what we're here for. And I, I I pray that that is something that we continue to to push towards. We continue to 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 seek out to study to to um, to to walk in. Um, oh man, I'm sorry. Uh, I thank you guys for taking the time to to come out and and to listen to the word. I pray that it finds you well. And I apologize if there was a lot of stuttering and, and things along that line. Um, a little nervous. Um, trying to take on um, or try to, to help out as best I can with, with regard to, uh, um, you know, allowing for us to still be able to fellowship and, and to, to do what it is that, um, God wants us to do, which is, is building the kingdom. Um, but I, I do pray that this finds you guys in, in a good place. Um, but we'll, we'll go ahead and, and, and pray out real quick. Um, Father, I thank you for opening the door for, for us to, to experience you. And, and I, I thank you, Father, for being able to, to allow us to, to hear your word. And I pray that everything that you, you, you brought to the table that we are able to receive and that we're able to, to build on. And I thank you, Father, for everything that you have. And I pray your will be done. In your holy and heavenly name, I pray. Amen. Um, now it, it is our time of, it's our time of giving. So if you would like to give, we have all of the information popping up on the screen. Um, so there's Givelify, there's there's PayPal, um, there's Cash App, um, all at the Glory Center STL. And while we're going through that process, um, I'll also give out some of the announcements. Um, next week, we will be in Cape Dorado for Resurrection Sunday. Um, so I, I pray that you guys are there. Um, there should be a lot of uh, good things going on um, there. Um, the men's um, the men's village will also be this Wednesday um, at 7 p.m. Uh, the link should go out here uh, really soon. So we're looking forward to seeing you guys there. Um, the first weekend in April, April 6th, um, is going to be the revived women's village kickback. Um, you, you do have to RSVP for that. So, um, you want to text two zero two four events to nine, four zero zero zero, uh, to get the information about where that's going to be at. Um, but for all the women folk, uh, you, you guys should go check it out. It should be a, a really good time. Um, and then we're still looking for people to be a part of, um, our different departments, um, and if you're looking to help out, whether it be the media or the children's department or the evangelistic team, um, you want to send an email to info at uh, the glory center dot STL or I'm sorry, info at glory, the glory center STL uh, dot org. And um, you should get um, some type of uh, feedback for that. Um, that's all I have in terms of the announcements. Um, I, again, I thank you guys for coming out and, and fellowshipping with us. Um, I pray that you all have a, a wonderful week. Um, I pray that you guys are able to, to, to operate in your purpose, to, to find yourselves being, um, in alignment with God's will and God's purpose. Um, and un until the next service, which should be Thursday, uh, for midweek fire, um, I, I pray that you all got, you all go, um, in the glory. Um, <laughs> I pray that you all go in the glory of the Lord. I'm sorry.